Hello, I have a prop. In this video, I'm gonna look at how do you use this, I'm gonna actually look at the code for using this Microsoft Connect in processing using the Open Connect for Processing Library. Now, uh, one thing I wanna mention it, that I did not mention in the previous video is that is if you install the Open Connect for Processing Library, you need nothing else whatsoever. It just works with the Connect. There is one exception on Windows 8 with the Connect version 2. You do need to install an extra driver, libusk. I will put that in the description below. Um, but so this is the Connect version one, model 1414. It would work with this example, but I'm gonna show you instead, I have the Connect version two over here. And you can see the only code that I filled in so far is having a variable called Connect two. So if you're using the Connect version one, the only thing you would change, this code would work mostly identically, um, is just say Connect uh, instead of Connect two. So it's not Connect one and Connect two, it's just Connect and Connect two. I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> if I get that wrong, somebody will correct me. Um, okay, so uh, let's look at how you get started. So I filled in a little bit of code, but the only things that you need really to get started are an import statement at the top. That import statement is saying, hey, I'm here to use this library. Uh, you need to declare a variable. This variable is gonna like hold all the information about this connect that you are using. So it's the thing that you're going to create, and I create it by saying new connect to this. Now, there is a way to use multiple connects, to use a version one and a version two, to specify which connect you want to use. That's beyond the scope of what I'm doing here. In this video, I'm only gonna look at, you just have one connect connected, to, one connect connected to your computer. It's the default one. All you need to do is say, equals new connect to this. So, once you've got that going, what is the next step? Well, you need to decide what it is you wanna do. And in this example, all I wanna do is use the depth image. So I'm gonna say, init, depth. So the connect, uh, the connect doesn't, the library doesn't start all of the feeds automatically. It's not going to start getting the infrared image, the raw depth, the depth image, the video image. It's only going to start using what you ask for. So in this case, I want to say init depth. And then in, I also want to say uh, init device, which will kind of get things going. And by the way, this is where if I had multiple devices, I could put an argument in there and say init device zero, one, or two, that type of thing. So once I have that, I'm ready to go and I can run this program and we will see nothing on the screen. So, but a lot of stuff like spit out here, which is kind of promising device firmware serial. The library is going to like put a lot of stuff in the console, which is um, some basic information that you can see if it's working. It will say like, no, nothing connected uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't have it um, connected. Ah, I realized that some other things I forgot in the first video, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, what's the next thing that you want to do? So let's just make sure things are working. One of the things the Connect gives you is that depth image because I said init depth. So init depth, there are two ways I can look at the depth. I can look at the raw depth values with the Connect version 2. These are numbers between 0 and 4500. With the Connect version 1, these are numbers between 0 and 2048. Um, these relate to millimeter measurements. Um, but what I want is get depth image. And you can see I, what I'm doing here is I'm asking the connect to give me this depth image and store it in a variable called image. And now what I can do is just draw that image on the screen to make sure things are working. So we can see here, and there it is. So there is the depth image. You can see I've got it, and now it's on the screen. So this is the goal of the library. It's pretty easy to work with in terms of just getting the data. So let's think about what you might want to do. So I think most, almost all of the, uh, almost everything that you would do where you're working with the raw depth data or with the depth image involves iterating over all the pixels. You wanna look at all the pixels and see which ones are the ones that are closest. You wanna look at all the pixels and see what's the highest point of the closest thing. Or you wanna look at all the pixels and say what's the sort of topology of the entire thing. So all of those statements I said involved look at all the pixels. So before I get to doing anything here, let's talk about what it means to look, <laughs> look, at, all, look at all the pixels. So this is something that I've covered in some other videos, a whole set of videos about just image processing um, from you know, JPEGs, PNGs, webcams, that sort of thing. You can refer back to those. I'll, I'll make sure I link to those at this moment in the video. Um, but just to remind you, if you have an image, whether it's a depth image or an RGB image, that image is a grid of pixels. And we typically, as human beings, look at this as a thing that's two-dimensional and it has a bunch of columns. 
and it has a bunch of rows. And usually we think of the columns as the x values and the rows as the y values. So you might think of this as like the columns numbered, like there's five columns numbered 0 through 4, and there's uh, four columns numbered 0 through 3. And so if I were over here, this is pixel 3 comma 1. So this is how uh, I think of pixels and images, and this is the, this, this image over here, this depth image, is a big grid of pixels, columns, and rows. The thing that you have to remember when working with stuff like this is that the computer is actually storing all of those depth values, all of those brightness depth values, in this singular one-dimensional array. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. And those numbers correspond like this. The counting goes across, comes down here, uh, comes down here, comes down here. So you can see I've got 20 pixels because I've got a 5 by 4 grid. 5 times 4 is 20. The pixels are numbers 0 through 19. So what we need is a methodology for if we're thinking of the x, y, how do I convert that to the location that's in this one-dimensional array, the index into that one-dimensional array? And the formula for doing that is x plus y times width. And you can see how that works, because if I look at this column index 2 over here, 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 5 is 17. So the width defines those numbers as they go sort of down row by row by row. So if I say 3 plus 1 times 5, that's 3 plus 5, which is 8. And you can see that's 8 right here. So this is the formula that you're going to have to get used to because what I'm going to add is loops. I'm going to say loop through every column and loop through every row, row to look at every spot in this depth array. So if I come back over here, we can now add that to our code. So for example, I can say right here, for every x from 0 to, and I'm going to say image.width, uh, not i. And I'm going to say for every y. And again, if this, this idea of a nested loop is confusing to you, I will refer back to some previous videos about image processing. But what we can see, what I would like you to see here, is how this is the loop to say, I want to look at every single depth pixel. So it could be, I want to search for the closest one, or I want to search for the, for the, the furthest away one, right? Or I want to just visualize every pixel in three-dimensional space. So for every x from 0 to the width, for every y from 0 to the height. And now what I could do is say, what is that index? How to apply that formula now, x plus y times image dot width. And then the color is the color that's in that pixel, even though it's a depth value, it's turned into a grayscale color, is the image dot pixels at that index. So this is now a loop that you will see in just about all the examples I intend to make today, where I'm looking at every single pixel and finding its index into the depth the, the, into that depth image and pulling out the color that's there. So what might I do with that? I could make a point in three-dimensional space. Let's do, let's, okay, let's do something here. Let's turn what we're seeing on the screen. Let me run this. Let's turn this into a lower resolution grid. So let's look, well, what I'm gonna change this program to do right now is just look at every 10 pixels or every 20 pixels and draw a rectangle with that particular uh, color there. So let's do that real quick. And I'm going to say, so what I'm, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to uh, brightness. I'm just going to look at the, um, I'm going to look at the brightness of that pixel, which is just a single value between 0 and 255. And I want to draw a rectangle at x, y. Now, I'm going up by one pixel. So what I want to do, and you'll see this in some of my examples, is I want to introduce a variable called skip. And I'll say skip equals 20, because that's how many pixels I'm going to skip. Instead of looking at every single pixel right now, I'm going to look at every 20 pixels. Um, and ev then I'm going to draw a rectangle at every 20 pixels, and I'm going to fill that rectangle with that particular color. So if we run this, we should see exactly what I had before, but just it's much lower resolution. So that you can see I'm still looking at all of the pixels, finding its color. Uh, uh, from, the, from the pixel array and then drawing a rectangle of some size, arbitrary size 20 at that spot. So you can see as I move around in front of the connect, you can see my hands here. And you can start to see like, ah, 
this is the kind of thing that computer vision wise, it might be easy to pick out my hands as the sort of singular blobs of black shapes up in front. So, um, okay, so this is getting us started. Now, what's the thing that you might want to do next? Let's think about how you might turn this now into something that's three, three dimensional. So, what I might do here is say, like, first of all, I want this program. One thing I should note, by the way, is the connect, the depth image that you're getting from the connect version two has a width of 512 and a height of 424. With the version one, it's actually 640 by 480, which is a little bit strange that it's higher resolution, but it's a little faster, a little more accurate here, I guess. There's like this beam of sunlight coming in, which is so lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna add P3D because what I want now is for this program to actually start rendering something in 3D. The other thing that I'm going to need to do is add push matrix and pop matrix because what I want to do is not is set the location of these uh, squares not by uh, the coordinate of the rectangle but by through a translation because ultimately I want to translate along the three-dimensional axis. So I use push matrix and pop matrix to save and restore. Um, that transformation state, these might be concepts that are unfamiliar to you. I will <laughs> refer you to a different video about transformations, but you can see I have the same exact thing here. So instead of drawing the rectangle at XY, I've now translated to XY and drawn the rectangle at 0, 0. Why am I doing this? Because now I could add something, I could add a Z here. So the first thing I might try is just say, okay, well, what is this Z? Let's make this Z equal to brightness. And you can see here, what do we got? We've got as I, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see some, uh, some rectangles are further in front than other ones that are further away. So the brighter ones are closer and the darker ones are further back. This isn't really, this isn't really doing me any good because actually I think what might make more sense is to have the closer ones be more forward and the further ones way be more behind. So I want to essentially position all these rectangles about where they actually are in physical space. And so to do that, I might do the map, use the map function, right? Because we know the brightness has a range between 0 and 255, but what I want is to now have a Z value, this Z value that's coming out of the screen. I want things that are dark to appear close and things that are bright to appear far away. So maybe I'll have the things that are dark to be at 150, units along the z-axis and the things that are bright to be at negative 150. So I'm taking that range that's between 0 and 255 and flipping it to have it map between 150, 150 and negative 150. And then also let's draw those rectangles a little bit smaller and honestly I think it might make sense to also just make them all white. So let's sort of see what we get here. Uh, oh, and I have the image behind it. Um, so you can see here as I come forward, uh, boy, this, is, uh, this isn't the best demonstration. Um, let, me, uh, let me do something here. <laughs> First, let me, let me comment out drawing this image. And uh, let's, let's leave the colors back in. Um, but I, but let's, um, let's invert the colors, which I'm just going to do that way, try to make this a little bit better. So you can see here as, the problem is there's this wall here, which is what you're seeing there. Uh, and something else is coming up, but skip this version of Java. Let's see if I can turn the connect a little bit this way. And you can see as I go back, you can see as I come forward, we're getting these uh, slightly larger, uh, larger rectangles. Now there's a moment actually where the connect stops seeing anything, and that's if I go way too close to it. Um, uh, but it's, since it's giving me a value of zero, it's actually still working here. So you can see that as I move the hand, the things are coming closer. And maybe this range isn't so great. I should have practiced this beforehand. So let's like make that range a bit more extreme. Uh, and you can see, ah, this is getting a little bit better now. So you can see as I come forward, these rectangles get a little bigger. There's a lot of noise here. I don't have this connect in like sort of a nice spot because there's all this other stuff in the room, like this wall and this table and this laptop. But I'm kind of, you can kind of see my form here uh, and my hands there as they come forward. So this is the basic idea of how you might start working with the connect. I'm going to try to show you some more practical uses of the connect in the next set of videos, but this is the basic idea of looping through all the pixels, looking at their brightness value, and mapping it. Now the truth of the matter is, if, if I was really doing this, what I probably would want to do is actually just look at that raw depth data. If I'm trying to visualize the data in 3D, this is not exactly the quote unquote correct way of doing it. So that's what I'm going to show you in the next video, how instead of using the depth image, 
how you might make use of the raw depth data, those numbers which are between 0 and 4,500. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, and I'll maybe see you in the next video.